tall was a T-Rex by Allison Limentani. The measurements inside this book are based on the skeletons of Thomas, Stan, and Sue. Many thanks to the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles and the Cedric Museum in Cambridge for their help in checking my Tyrannosaurus facts. How tall was a T-Rex? A T-Rex might have been scaly, like a reptile, or feathered, like a bird. Its eyes were as big as baseballs. Its teeth were as big as bananas. A T-Rex could have eaten a goat in one gulp. It was as heavy as three hippos. And as long as six lions. A T-Rex could have run as fast as an elephant or a meerkat, but slower than a cheetah. 37 children's footprints could fit inside one T-Rex footprint. But how tall was a T-Rex? A T-Rex was as tall as 10 velociraptors. Or half as tall as a brachiosaurus. Or as tall as a giraffe. Scientists can tell a lot about dinosaurs by looking at bones and fossils. The facts in this book are based on what we currently think about the Tyrannosaurus rex, but who knows what we'll discover in the future. Don't go away! Up next is a video from the Museum of Natural and Cultural History at the University of Oregon. This video will highlight some awesome dinosaur facts and walk you through the contents of the home activity kit available for pickup at the library. While supplies last, enjoy! Hello and welcome to the Museum of Natural and Cultural History at the University of Oregon. The museum is located on Kalapuya Alihi, the traditional homeland of the Kalapuya people. My name is Mia and I'm glad you've joined me today to talk about Oregon's dino story. Dinosaurs are an exciting part of Earth's natural history, and we're going to talk today about what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur, how we know that dinosaurs even exist, and also the mystery of Oregon's dinosaur history. Many of you have a home activity kit for Oregon's dino story, and I'll be going over all the materials and activities in this kit at the end of the show. If you don't have a kit, stay tuned anyway, because many of the materials can be found at home around the house. Now, let's talk about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are a group of reptiles that lived a long, long, long time ago. They ruled the earth for almost 200 million years. That time in history is called the age of the dinosaurs and it ended about 66 million years ago. Scientists think that an asteroid, a huge space rock collided with planet earth and then it changed the climate to suddenly be colder, which made it so that the dinosaurs and many other large animals went extinct. When an animal goes extinct, that means there are no longer any of those animals living here on Earth. Dinosaurs are well known as an animal that went extinct, but I think they should be remembered for how successful they were while they lived here. Remember, they lived for almost 200 million years and ruled the Earth during that time. We also know that they were found on every continent on the planet. That means they lived all over and not just in one area. Dinosaurs were also really diverse. They were in all shapes and sizes and there were over 700 different species of dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs were smaller than us, but others were as long as a school bus, like the Ankylosaurus, or even as long as two school buses, like the Brachiosaurus. I can sit down inside of a Brachiosaurus footprint but a Coelophysis dinosaur footprint can fit in the hand. Some dinosaurs had plates on their backs or spikes on their forehead. 
or even large hooked claws on their toes. Some ate meat, but most were plant eaters. Dinosaurs were on the earth way before people were around, so how is it that we know that they even existed? How is it that scientists have figured out that so many different shapes and sizes of dinosaurs existed on the earth? Hmm, I wish I could remember how we can figure that out. Oh, that's right. Skeletons and bones. We can find the bones and other evidence left behind by dinosaurs from long ago. But how does a dinosaur turn into a fossil? Check this out. A fossil is the remains or evidence of a living thing that has been preserved over a long, long time. Picture an animal, like a dinosaur, that dies near a stream or a lake. It sinks down into the mud and its soft parts get eaten or they rot away. The skeleton gets buried in layers of silt and sand, that's called sediment, and minerals seep into the bones. Over millions of years, the sediment and the minerals harden into rock and the animal bones are fossilized. When the rock erodes and wears away, the fossil becomes exposed and then it might be discovered. That's how most dinosaur bones become fossilized. Bones have a spongy texture on the inside that, that make lots of gaps and openings where the minerals can fill in and then harden into stone. And when we find things like teeth and bones and skeletons, we can find out a lot of stuff about what dinosaurs were like. As you can tell from my skeleton friend here, we can see how big the animal was. We can see how that animal was shaped, even what animal it is, how it moves, or what it eats. And there's lots of other kinds of dinosaur fossils that aren't the part of the body of the animal. These are actually things that just show us proof or evidence that that animal existed or that it was around. This can be something like a nest or an egg that a dinosaur left behind. It even can be the footprints or trackways that that dinosaur might have left in the mud. And sometimes we even find fossilized poop. These kinds of fossils are called trace fossils, and they're also important for figuring out how dinosaurs lived. For instance, footprints or trackways can show us how many feet a dinosaur walked on, or how fast they could run, or how they hunted. Often when we think about fossils, people immediately think about dinosaurs, but not all fossils are from dinosaurs, and not all animals that lived a long time ago or are extinct were dinosaurs. Not even all the reptiles that lived during the age of the dinosaurs were actually dinosaurs. So what is it that makes a dinosaur a dinosaur? How are they different from other animals? Take a look at these animals. Which ones do you think are dinosaurs? There's a plesiosaur, an allosaurus, dimetrodon, mammoth, and titanoboa. Which ones are dinosaurs? Scientists classify animals into groups based on the kinds of features that they have in common. There are certain features that all dinosaurs have in common, and that helps us to know that they're dinosaurs. Do any of these animals have the features to make them a dinosaur? Well, first, we know that dinosaurs are vertebrates. That means they have a backbone and a bony skeleton. All of these animals in the pictures are vertebrates. They all have a skeleton. We also know that dinosaurs lay eggs. One of these animals does not lay eggs. Can you guess which one? That's right, the mammoth. It is not a dinosaur. But all reptiles lay eggs, not just dinosaurs. The animals left on the screen are all reptiles, but they are not all dinosaurs. Dinosaurs also have extra holes in their skull, behind their eye socket, and that window in their skull helps them to have strong jaw muscles and also helps to keep their skull not so heavy. But other reptiles also have that feature. We do know that all dinosaurs have four limbs. One, two, three, four. Do all the animals that we're looking at have four limbs? Can you find one that doesn't? That's right, the titanoboa snake. Snakes are reptiles, but they don't have legs. So he is not a dinosaur. Dinosaur legs are made for walking on the ground. That means that they live on land and not in the ocean or in the water. So all dinosaurs live on land. So looking at our animals again, the plesiosaur 
actually lives in water, so it is not a dinosaur, even though it's a reptile that lived at the same time as dinosaurs. But that still isn't enough. There are other reptiles that still have all of those features that we just listed off. They live on land, they have four limbs, they lay eggs, they have a hole in their skull the same way dinosaurs do. So what is it that makes dinosaurs different from those other reptiles? It all comes down to the legs. They have a hole in their skeleton right at the hip that lets their legs go straight down underneath them. This helps them to run faster and move more efficiently. Lizards and other reptiles don't have that hole in the hip, so their legs actually go out to the side like this. Dinosaur legs are straight and lizards are out to the side like this. Try that with me. Dino legs, lizard legs. <laughs> Dino legs, <laughs> lizard legs. Try crawling around like a dinosaur with your legs out straight and then like a lizard with your arms like they're in a push-up and see how much harder it is. So this is the feature that makes dinosaurs so different from other reptiles. Look at our last two animals we have, the Allosaurus and the Dimetrodon. The Dimetrodon is actually a lizard. I have a toy here of a Dimetrodon and you can see that his legs go out to the side instead of straight down like a dinosaur. So he is a lizard that lived during the time of dinosaurs, but he was not an actual dinosaur. The only animal left is the Allosaurus and that is a dinosaur. Another animal that people often confuse with dinosaurs is the Pteranodon. And the Pteranodon is not a dinosaur because it doesn't have that hole in the hip. It is though a big flying reptile that lived during the time of the dinosaurs, but it wasn't an actual dinosaur. Scientists that study ancient life by looking at the fossil record are called paleontologists. I'd like to introduce you to a graduate student in paleontology here at the University of Oregon. Elena, thanks for joining us today. Hi, and thank you for having me. Can you tell us how you became interested in paleontology? Um, I was always very into nature. I was a very outdoorsy kid, so I kind of knew I always wanted to be a, a biologist. So in my undergrad, I, I got a bachelor on biological science. And I think for me, the crucial point was my first field work that we went to this very, very out of nowhere Pleistocene caves. We spent two weeks working every single day inside this cave digging fossils and it was a collaborative worker. So there was researchers from outside of my labs and I saw everyone interacting and doing their research and science while we were inside of a cave digging fossils. So that was absolutely fantastic. And I figured out that moment that that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I've been doing ever since. We've been talking today about how fossils tell us the story of dinosaurs, but I know that science is always changing with new discoveries. Can you tell us how our understanding about dinosaurs has changed over time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the more fossils if we're found and the more evidence we see, uh, a lot of the previous thought that we have changed with those new informations. So for instance, uh, dinosaurs, we knew from a very long time, they were very big. So scientists for a very long time thought that they dragged their tails because they were too heavy, so they must drag their tail. But we've seen and found several different footprints fossils that do not have that dragging tail mark. So that shows us that they could actually held her tail up high while they're walking. And I think the most fantastic change that happened, and it still fascinates a lot of people, uh, is that birds are actually descendant of dinosaurs. So we can actually say that birds are living dinosaurs. And this happens with the new fountains and new fossils that we found. So there's a lot of like early dinosaurs that had feathers. And there's a lot of shared characteristics within dinosaurs and birds that put them together in the same group. So they all have like three toe feet. They all have the S neck shape. And they all have this hole in their hips that is different from mammals, for instance, that allows them to position their limb bones like under their body. So when you hear people saying that all the dinosaurs got extinct, we know now that that's not exactly true because we found evidence that somewhere along the line there was those small little bird-like dinosaurs that little by little over millions and millions and millions of times evolved and, and into this entire diversity of birds that we see nowadays. 
Wow, thank you. It's so exciting to know that birds that are alive today are related to dinosaurs that lived millions of years ago. You are probably still wondering about Oregon's dinosaur history. Did dinosaurs live in Oregon? This is a fun map of many fossils that have been found in the state of Oregon. Oregon has lots of cool ancient animals that lived here and fossils that have been found here, like the giant ice age animals, the mammoth, or the giant sloth. Even camels lived here in Oregon at one time. But it's very rare to find dinosaur fossils in Oregon. Why is that? Well, the fossil record helps us figure that out because paleontologists have found ancient ocean animal fossils in Eastern Oregon, like the Ammonite or the Shastasaurus. These animals lived in the ocean during the time of the dinosaurs, but they were not dinosaurs. And how did the ocean animals get all the way over here when the ocean is over on this side of our state? That's because the ocean used to be on this side. The beach was over here next to the border of Idaho. During most of the age of the dinosaurs, the land that is now Oregon was either underwater or hadn't formed yet. There was very little land for dinosaurs to actually live on, but we did have marine reptiles swimming around, or flying reptiles in the sky, like this plesiosaur or pteranodon. We have found fossils of these animals in Oregon, and they lived during the same time as dinosaurs. But dinosaur fossils are very hard to find here. Later in the age of dinosaurs, more of Oregon's land had formed and the ocean had receded. We do believe that probably some dinosaurs lived here during that time but something else happened to make it hard to find those dinosaur fossils. About 50 million years ago, while Oregon's land was still forming, hundreds of volcanoes of all shapes and sizes started erupting across the landscape. This didn't just happen in one day. It actually happened over millions of years. So Oregon became covered in layers and layers of lava almost over the whole state. So even if there were dinosaur fossils under there, they're covered by so many layers of lava and volcanic rock that they would be hard to find. Even rare things do happen sometimes. I want to show you now a story about the first published dinosaur fossil found in Oregon, as told by Greg Vitalik, a paleontologist here at the museum at University of Oregon. This is our latest discovery from the museum. We're very proud of this. Um, it's not very impressive. It's a little bone, toe bone but it was the first actually published Oregon dinosaur. We've, we've suspected dinosaurs for a while, but this was the first one to actually turn up in a peer-reviewed scientific publication. This one uh, we found in Mitchell in central Oregon, uh, along with ammonites, which of course marine creatures. Dinosaurs didn't live in the sea. Um, that was kind of a surprise. It was not where we expected to find a dinosaur fossil. We um, have a pretty good idea of vaguely what kind of dinosaur it is. We think it's an ornithopod. It's a kind of a herbivorous dinosaur. Uh, we know by comparing it with other dinosaur foot bones that it was a big creature, um, 17 feet long, um, weighing about um, 1,500 pounds. So a fairly large herbivorous dinosaur. It's just a single bone out on a marine rock. We have a kind of a model we like to call bloat and float. So when a carcass dies on the seashore, for example, and, and we see those with increasing frequency now with whales beaching, um, it will um, puff up with decay gases in its stomach and float out to sea where it will disintegrate, get attacked by sharks. Um, other creatures would have been around to tear it to pieces and then the, in, the bone itself sank to the seafloor. You can imagine these are very rare. We have a few cases of this bloat and float dinosaur remains in marine rocks, but um, very, very rare. So we know the general kind of dinosaur, uh, and we know its size, um, and that's about all. Uh, but now that we have one, we're on the lookout for more and more informative material. As you heard there, paleontologists are always searching for more dinosaur fossils, even here in Oregon, so that we can learn more about the exciting story of dinosaurs on Earth. Now let's check out the Oregon's Dino Story Activity Kit. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't have an activity kit, stay tuned because there are some activities that you can do with materials you may be able to find around your house. The activity kit has the instruction sheet, 
with pictures and instructions for all of the activities as well as most of the materials that you're going to need to do these activities at home. The Am I a Dinosaur activity has animal sorting cards that you can cut out and use to sort dinosaurs and not dinosaurs out of all the different prehistoric animals that are in the cards. There are a dinosaur toy and a lizard toy included so that you can closely examine the difference between dino legs and lizard legs. There's also some sidewalk chalk and the measuring tape so that you can explore dinosaurs of all shapes and sizes. You can go outside and mark with the chalk on the pavement the different dinosaur features and measure yourself up next to those dinosaur features and see how you compare in size. You can also use the animal cards to find the lengths of all the different dinosaurs and mark those on the pavement and see how big those dinosaurs really were. Another activity in the kit is to use wooden craft sticks to make paleo puzzles. You can create a puzzle of animals that lived during the age of the dinosaurs using the stencil page in your kit. To make a puzzle, you line up your seven craft sticks in a line and tape the back together like this. Turn it over and use your stencil to outline the shape of the dinosaur. Then you can color it in and make a scene for your puzzle. When it's all finished, take the tape off and you will have a number of puzzle pieces. Mix them up, a couple puzzles together, and it's just like a paleontologist finding a number of different fossils together in the same fossil bed. When you take the puzzle pieces out, you can put them together to find your animal. Now remember, the reason we know that dinosaurs exist is because we can find their fossils. There's also some activities in the kit that explore the different ways that fossils form and what that tells us about the dinosaurs. One way we talked about fossils forming is the bones turning into stone by being buried underground and having minerals seep in and then hardening over time. Well, you can explore this in the kit with a piece of sponge and some salt water. Fossils can form in a number of different ways. Sometimes an animal leaves an impression in the soft mud and then that impression or shape of the animal will harden over time. And that can be a plant or an animal. You can see it sometimes makes a print in the stone like this piece of a plant. Or you might have an animal, shape of an animal in a fossil like this fish. You can see the shape of the fish that has been printed in the stone. You can try making some of those kinds of fossils yourself, making impressions into a soft piece of clay that is part of the kit using your dinosaur toy or the feather and the shell that is included. Or you can find evidence of animals living in around your home, either inside or out, by looking for traces of life. Things like cat scratches on the furniture or leaves that bugs have eaten outside. These are what make for trace fossils in the future. If those got preserved over time, we could find them later and know that an animal was there. At the end of the kit, there are lots of ideas for you to explore some more about dinosaurs. You can use some of these ideas for activities or make up some investigations of your own. You can use those animal stencils to create puppets and make a landscape and put on a show. You can use your dinosaur toy to create a dinosaur habitat diorama with a shoebox and different materials that you can find around your house. You can also use those animal cards to play a memory game or make some flour and salt dough at home to create dinosaur sculptures or make more fossils. Keep enjoying that dinosaur exploration at home. And thanks for joining us today. For more information about receiving STEAM kits, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.